pervasive data integrator can be a powerful tool, enabling multiple connections between a wide variety of systems and data points. The Repository Explorer is the starting point for every data integrator project. To get started on your first project, you must understand how to configure your workspace and repositories through the Repository Explorer. This program, the Repository Explorer, is the starting point for all pervasive data integrator projects. From this one application, developers can navigate to projects that already exist, or open and or create new pervasive data integrator elements such as maps, processes, structured schemas, and other such elements. Now, how do you configure Repository Explorer? Well, the first thing you need to do is open it. Once installed, Repository Explorer can be accessed like any other program on Windows. Open the Start menu, go to All Programs, go to the Pervasive folder, there will be a Data Integrator 9 folder. Inside it, you will find a Repository Explorer 9 program. Open it. The Repository Explorer organizes files using two methods. The first, first method is via a workspace. A workspace is a collection of one or more repositories and a single macrodef.xml that is specific to the workspace. For further information on the macrodef.xml, please check out our two videos on macro definition variables. To create a new workspace, one just has to follow a few simple steps. Select File from the menu bar. Select Manage Workspaces. Click the drop-down to the right of Workspaces root directories and navigate to the location you would like to save your workspace in. Hit OK. The Workspace root directory is the location where the Workspace folder will be created. Inside of this folder is a set of mandatory default files and folders and are created when you create a new workspace. They are the XMLDB folder. This is used as the default repository for all data elements and code that you'll be writing for this workspace. The FileRef.xml is a list of file references used by the workspace. The MacroDefXML is the MacroDef file used by all process elements or map elements inside the workspace. For further information, please see our video. Finally, there is the Repositories.xml. This is a list of all repositories for the workspace. This directory is rarely changed after being set. After you have selected this directory, select Add. To add an existing workspace, check the box for the proper workspace. If adding a new workspace, which will often be the case, click the Create New Workspace button. You'll be prompted for a name. Give your workspace a descriptive name and then click OK to return to the previous screen. Click OK. Find the workspace you just added. Click the name so it is highlighted. Then click the Set Current button on the right. This activates the workspace, allowing you to access it and its repositories. Just a few notes about the workspace. You can also right-click on the white space to the left of the screen that displays your current repository and select the Manage Workspaces options from there. Also, when creating a new workspace using the Create New Workspace option, the macrodef.xml file from the current workspace will be copied into the directory of the new workspace. This includes the macro names and values. This is helpful when standard macros are used, but is something to pay attention to in regards to directory paths and file names. Now that you have your workspace set up, it's time to configure the repository. Repositories are a directory path pointing to where the pervasive data integrator project files will be located. A workspace can have any number of repositories, which are displayed in a tree view on the left side of the Repository Explorer. Only pervasive files located in one of the repositories for the workspace can be opened and edited from the Repository Explorer. To add a new repository is, once again, a few simple steps. If you are not currently working in the workspace within which you want to create a repository, navigate to that workspace using File, Manage Workspaces, or right-click on the white space on the left that displays the file directory structure and select Manage Workspaces. Then, click the text of the workspace you would like to use, to use, and this will highlight it, and then you click the Set Current Workspace button. Once you have your proper workspace, once again you go to the File menu. You can also right-click on the white space on the left of the screen and choose the Manage Repositories option. Once you have that, you can either modify an existing repository, which will be often the case where you change the default XMLDB folder to where your code will live. If you're adding one, you click the Add button to create a new repository. At this point, you can either navigate to the folder using the View, or you can paste a file path is copied from the Windows Explorer. 
Once done, click OK. Your repository is now created, and it will refresh, displaying on the left-hand side of the screen. And now for a few general notes about the Repository Explorer workspaces and repositories in general. Use a standard naming convention for the workspaces. This allows for easy identification of the, what project the workspace is for. This is an MPRISE standard. Also, use a standard data structure and directory path for the repository folder. This prevents issues that may arise when multiple developers work on the same code base. Pervasive data integrator projects use a series of pointers within the files, and by standardizing the repository paths, you prevent those pointers from being corrupted when moving code between developers. Lastly, after creating a new workspace, it is prudent to open the macrodef XML file and remove unneeded macros and change others to match your new project. Please see our other two videos on how to do this. If you have any questions on how to use Repository Explorer or how to start your data integration project, please reach out to Emprise. We're here to help.